And grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts and sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, and enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in one true faith. In this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my, me sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. This is Luther's explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed, in which he affirms that we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to accompany us on our journey of faith and our belief in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes to us not as one we are to worship, but one in whom we are to glorify Christ. The Holy Spirit points from all directions to Christ in our lives and how it is that Jesus is the one that we should give all honor and praise. The Spirit teaches us that sin at its heart is not a matter of actions or morality, but has to do with whether and how we will receive and believe in the Son as the one whom God has sent into the world. The Spirit convinces us about righteousness, which has to do with Jesus returning to God. In this reading, Jesus is at the point of returning to God, which is the signal that the role of Jesus in his sending and mission has been completed. Righteousness has to do with Jesus' testimony that all God has given him to do has been accomplished in his death and resurrection. The glory of the Son has been truly seen. God's righteousness has been made known in God's love by the sending of the Son for the forgiveness of our sin. Now the Spirit comes upon us to assure the faithful what God has done in Christ Jesus is true. Well, the Spirit also convinces us about judgment. And that judgment is precisely that in the actions of the Trinity, the ruler, Satan, or evil in this world has been condemned. If there's any judgment, judgment has to do with all who would not believe in God, who is about in the Son of Christ. To show God's love and to bring abundant life to those whom the Son has chosen, and for whom he has given his life as the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. The Holy Spirit in our hearts is, is that constant reminder of the sacrifice and gift of Christ on the cross. The Holy Spirit is sent among us to give us the gift that help in welcoming God in our hearts, which we are told we cannot do by ourselves. Where is it in your life you've asked someone for help? I believe for many of us, especially men, we are not wired that way and we'll do whatever it takes to figure, figure things out without relying on anyone else. And in this day of YouTube videos, we are even less reliant on others for assistance as we can easily Google a, a solution to a particular problem and a plethora of videos appear to help us. Now that is fine for trying to figure out how to fix that flat on the tractor or troubleshoot a, a problem with your stove. But does it really help when we're in that dark place we can't seem to get out of? And within this last week, I've heard about two young men who took their lives for whatever reason. They both seem to have the world by the horns, one being a world traveler involved in all sorts of activities that made me envious of this man's journey. But I've often asked myself, what in the world is so terrible that someone in their teens or early 20s would 
go to the extreme of taking their own life. About a year ago, a 12-year-old from FEC took his own life. Now, I don't remember anything from my experience at the age of 12 that would take me to that extreme. But please, don't get me wrong, as I am not judging. I'm just a little confused as to how some people get to that point in their life. Now, I remember when I was a teenager, one of the town fathers decided to take his own life instead of living with the ramifications of certain medical conditions. However, I can remember the pain of his wife, his sons, his daughters, and grandchildren because they no longer had that presence in their lives. It was over too soon. I get that there are different pressures in this day and age, but from what I know of their families, there was an abundance of love to surround their lives. Why can't we ask for help? Some individuals may feel that asking for help is a sign of weakness, making them appear less competent, and, and they may be hesitant to admit that they cannot manage everything on their own. Hesitation in our fear of being rejected or being judged, embarrassment where we feel ashamed to admit that we may need help, especially if it involves a personal or, or a certain sensitive issue and may lead us to feelings of inadequacy or failure. Shyness, where we may struggle to communicate our needs and may feel uncomfortable or awkward when expressing ourselves, which can be particularly challenging in situations where one may need to ask for help from someone they might not necessarily know well. Pride. Again, this goes back to the fact that when we ask for help, it can be perceived as weakness. Impatience. Where we may prefer to take on the tasks ourselves. Feeling it's faster and easier to do so. And we may not want to waste time explaining what we need or waiting for someone else to complete a task. And these all lead to an angst of what makes it challenging to seek assistance. We don't want to be defined as weak or incompetent or even worse, as seen as unable to take care of ourselves. In an article posted by Patricia Hubert dated May 24th, she says it takes courage to step out of our comfort zone and ask for help. But the benefit of doing so can be tremendous. Reaching out to others can lead to better physical and mental well-being, increased productivity, better time management, and the opportunity to develop connections and collaborations. One of the key benefits of reaching out for help is the positive impact it can have on our own physical well-being. By delegating some of our tasks or seeking assistance from others, we can free up some of our time and energy to focus on taking care of ourselves. When we are faced with challenges or obstacles, it can often lead to feelings of stress, anxiety, or we are overwhelmed. By seeking support from others, we gain a fresh perspective on the situation and feel less burdened by the weight of our responsibilities, providing a sense of comfort and security, which can reduce those stress levels and improve our overall mood. And it can also provide an opportunity to develop new connections and collaborations. When we reach out for help, we open ourselves up to the possibility of building new relationships and partnerships with people who share our values and our interests. Now, Jesus promised the disciples he was going to send an advocate to show them the way after he departs. On Pentecost, that advocate, in the guise of that rushing wind and fire above each of their heads, comes headlong into their lives and ours. 
to provide comfort, care, and a way for us to experience God's love in our lives. The commandment by Jesus to love one another as he loves us is what gives us the strength to ask for help. We can ask God. We can ask Jesus. We can ask the Holy Spirit. We can also ask the disciples who sit next to us in these pews to share that love to ensure that no one is frightened to ask for help. A few weeks ago, I asked you where it was that the Holy Spirit was going to lead you. This week, the Holy Spirit leads us beyond the cross to help those who are struggling, to share the good news and bring light to someone who needs to be lifted up. We can't do it alone. So don't be afraid to accept help when you require it and give help regardless of who needs it. Amen.